This deck is low-key competitive, and I don't know what it is about people not wanting to try it out, but the most recent YCS, YCS Niagara, showed us that Sky Striker is still very, very good in today's format. At the end of the day, the deck can just play an insane amount of power spells, and with anti-spell at one, that's really, really good. So in today's video, what I wanted to do is show you guys my build of Sky Striker for today's format. I think this deck is absolutely insane. It's stuff that people are not prepared for, and when people are not preparing for a deck like Sky Striker, it gives this deck even more of an advantage. So with that being said, I want to show you guys what Sky Striker looks like in today's format, my personal build, and what I believe to be a really, really powerful build of Sky Striker. Let's go. All right, so to get things started off with the main deck here, I do want to say that this is a go like blind second OTK kind of build of Sky Striker. And honestly, I think it is the best way to play Sky Striker over here. And this was heavily inspired off of Ryan Yu's build. So shout out Ryan Yu, it's not the exact same build. I think I tweaked it up a little bit, but it's a very, very powerful build. So to get into it, of course, we're playing three Ray and then the one Rose. This is all you're going to need. You don't want to play any more of these. These are the kind of worst cards in your deck. You get to these through different means, but uh, you don't want to be opening up these cards. What you do want to open up though is your board breakers and your other spell cards which are all like power cards right so one rose three ray very important for anyone who doesn't know ray has a quick effect where you contribute it to summon a sky striker ace monster from the extra deck and then if it's in the graveyard and a link sky striker monster you control is destroyed by battle or leaves the field you summon this back from your graveyard so it is graveyard recursion and then rose is really good because uh if a sky striker ace monster is normal special summon except itself you can special summon this card so it's kind of like an extender for you it's also another sky striker name for you when you need it to be and then the other their effect is if an opponent's monster in the extra monster zone is destroyed by battle or leaves the field because of your card effect while this card is in the graveyard you can then special summon this card and then negate the effects of one monster your opponent controls why is that really good it's because we are playing an otk version of sky striker and we're going to be playing a lot of breakers so if we're breaking our opponent's board this comes back from the graveyard negates another card and then it becomes a name for us to link off with and try to otk with right so rose is very important in that sense as well then we're playing three engage of course engage the most important card in the deck the fact that it's back at three is absolutely insane three engage engage to engage is one of the most broken things this is literally pot of green so why would you not play pot of green so three engage here and then we are playing three widow anchor here as well widow anchor is really nice because it's essentially like an imperm for you and then it also snatch steals a monster as well so again all of these cards are either board breakers help you otk help you link climb three widow anchor very very important then we are playing three of the sky striker mobilized linkage linkage is also really good because it's another otk this is like essentially what pushes your otk with the sky striker monsters so three linkage because if we see this we don't gotta search it but of course it's always searchable off of your engage which is insane but that three linkage because this enables your otk as well then we're playing two of the shark cannon now shark cannon is really really good because it banishes a card from the graveyard so it's effectively a dd crow slash of the steel for you which is nice and then shark cannon as well also lets you take control of that monster if you have three or more spells so this also helps to extend link climb and do a lot of things with that sense shark cannon widow anchor the fact that they snatch steel as well pretty much is really good one afterburner this is kind of just a board breaker that you can search one of the multi-roll you don't need more than one especially in a going second build you never need more than one one hornet drones is the last sky striker card that we're playing hornet drones essentially effectively another sky striker is a monster right so one of these so that is it for the sky striker cards over here these cards are super consistent like engage of course is a pot of greed you have linkage that is going to be your otk machine so these cards are all the that you need for the sky striker cards i'm not even playing the field spell you don't need it you want to make room for breakers because breakers are how you're going to win the game and for anyone who's newer and never got to play sky striker at its peak i want to show you guys why engage is so powerful and why everyone calls it a pot of greed it's essentially if you control no monsters you can add a sky striker card from your deck to your hand any sky striker card so it's a search and then if you have three or more spells in your graveyard you can draw a card so it gets you two cards essentially just off of this one card and why they call it pot of greed is because it's like pot of greed you draw two instead of drawing two you search one and then draw draw one and then if you just draw engage off of engage like that's happy that's it's so phenomenal so three engage absolutely insane now one reason i think this deck also is kind of buffed this format is because anti-spell is that one and because anti-spell is that one there's no real counterplay to this it's just such an insane deck. It's not like Tempai where you can play D barrier and stuff. This deck, you don't really lose to D barrier because it's all link summons. So this deck, no anti-spell and D barrier not doing anything is absolutely insane. So let's get into the rest of the spell cards here. We're playing one Rota, of course, it searches your Ray. One called by the grave, of course, just as a hand trap protection. Three upstart goblin. Upstart is really, really powerful. Of course, we know that we want our spell cards in the graveyards for our sky striker spells to get their extra effect. So three upstart, it also helps you go through your deck and effectively you're playing a 37 card deck with this card right so it gets spells in your graveyard and it gets you more consistency so three upstart you don't mind giving your opponent life points it's not the end of the world we are playing two thrust 
because Thrust is essentially going to search everything in this deck. Thrust not only searches all the break breakers that I'm going to show you, it also searches your engage, which is absolutely insane. The fact that you can search engage off of this is crazy. Now, a lot of the times you really won't be unless your hand is all like breakers, but two Thrust to search engage is really good. But then also you can search all your breakers, like I said. So we're playing two talent here. I like playing two and two. I know you could play three, but I don't like three Thrust because again, it's the hard ones per turn that I don't want to open multiple of. And if my opponent doesn't really have a hand trap to use, this is kind of dead. So I kind of want to just play two and two if i see it i see it at least if i see a combination of these two i can use both and then i can use thrust to search something else as well right so two thrust two talent one harpies of course two lightning storm we got to deal with the back row somehow there's not too many back row decks nowadays which is really nice but uh some back row is really really good two regeki and two dark hole the reason we're playing two and two is because dark hole is actually really good right now because you don't want to lose to mimigul mimigul is a still relevant deck like it's a very powerful deck and the fact that it puts the monster in your main monster zone kind of ruins your sky striker spell cards so dark hole is really good because it clears your own board and then if you're able to kind of break your opponent's board with stuff like shark cannon and widow anchor and let's say you steal their monsters and you're unable to link them away for whatever reason or you just have extra bodies you can dark hole clear it out summon your ray get like let's say you have a linkage then you're just gonna be able to otk with that right so that's why i really like two dark hole two raigeki just breakers on their own and they're all not once per turn so if you literally draw four of these you can have to be all four of them assuming your opponent you know can negate them all but four of these cards absolutely insane we're also playing three droplet droplet is such a good board breaker right now in this deck specifically in this deck it's really good because all of these spell cards you guys are seeing this is chainable so if I activate Raigeki and my opponent has like a negate, you can chain Droplet, send the Raigeki, negate that card. The second thing Droplet is good for as well is with all the quick plays that you're playing in this deck. So you're playing quick play Widow Anchor, quick play Linkage, quick play Shark Cannon. There's so many different things that you can send off of your Droplet. So like, let's just say you go like Raigeki, chain Widow Anchor, chain Droplet, send Widow Anchor, send Raigeki. And then, uh, you know what I mean? Like, it's just so bro broken. So that's why three droplet in this deck is really, really good as a board breaker. And then three imperm is the last card you're playing. It's good because you can actually, if you're forced to go first, you can thrust into this and set it and have that kind of disruption. It's also a board breaker. It's also the only hand trap that you're playing. So this card is really, really good in this deck. And I think it's just very, very powerful. But that's it for the deck. It's a 40 card main deck, but effectively 37 because you're playing three upstar. Moving on to the extra deck over here. It's going to seem kind of standard and I'll explain it when I get to it. But we're playing three Kagari. Of course, Kagari is your most important one being able to recycle your spell cards to shizuku you're not playing three anymore you don't want to go first anyways this is only really that good for going first so you're only playing two just for when you need it but it doesn't come up as often same thing with hayate hayate is a really good card of course but we're only playing two you don't need the third one of this i think you only ever used to play two hayate anyway three shizuku is definitely a thing but again you're not going first anymore so two and two is perfectly fine we're playing one kind this kind of just comes up in time one zeke this is a monster that you can use when you have extra bodies on your side of the field instead of just making link ones you of course have a link two here we're also playing the azalea temperance this is a link three that you can play it's a sky striker card which is really nice on top of that it doesn't actually need a sky striker name to make it so just two monsters including a link monster so like i said if you use widow anchor if you use your shark cannon you can then make this make it in the extra monster zone points down which is really nice and on top of that it's a link three which means you can actually make access code talker with it and then have access code talker at uh, 5300 attack and that is really relevant as well right so this into access code is very very relevant putting this in your extra monster zone is also really good because your sky striker spells are still going to be live so i like this into this and then we're just playing one ip and one sp sp of course comes up pretty often but i like ip because like i said earlier if you're stealing your opponent's monsters off of your widow anchor or shark cannon or even thrust let's say right you need generic cards to make it's not just the sky striker ones you need generic cards to make ip is pretty generic sp is pretty generic hita and dark are also pretty generic hita you don't of course have any fire monsters in your deck but with all the fire decks running around if you're able to steal one of them you make a hita you kind of revive something and then you're able to kind of continue from there so whether you link climb into your temperance because this needs a link monster so you can go like hita take a monster use this and the other monster you took into this and then kind of continue to link climb into something like access code talker or whatnot right so hita and dark here are really really good but i would say i really like this extra deck actually i wouldn't change too much i know there's that other link to striker striker monster I, I can't remember the name the one that pops cards i never think that card actually comes up it's not that great in the deck it doesn't really synergize with this deck in any way i think this card being a link three is more important and just better to play overall and lastly for the side deck we are going to be siding in a lot of cards to go first because your deck already does so well going second but we are playing two cards to go second so we're playing three ash 
and three Droll. Droll just shuts down a lot of the rogue decks, which is why we're playing three Droll. And Ash is also really good as a generic card as well, especially when you're forced to go first, especially games two and games three, right? Like, you know, you're going to be forced to go first. So you side out some of your breakers for some hand traps, because even if you're going first, hand traps are going to be relevant. But I will say this, side decks are always going to be up to personal preference. There's so many different ways to build the side deck, depending on the format. If your locals is a bunch of combo players, side for combo. If your locals is a bunch of back row players, side for back row. This kind of covers a little bit of everything. So three Ash, three Droll, I think is very, very important. And then we're playing a lot of cards to go first. Three D barrier, the Tempai matchup, the Ubel matchup, like all of the actual Azamina matchups, this card is actually now randomly good into because you have stuff like Hollowed, Azamina, which is going to make the La Sylvia. And then you have stuff like Ubel, which is going to make Phantom and then Necro Equip Princess, like all the Fiendsmith stuff going to make Necro Equip Princess plus your Aerial Eater. Just being able to lock out a fusion is actually really, really good. You don't have to play against uh, Desiree and stuff then. So D barrier, three of them is really, really good. Three different dimension ground. DDG is absolutely insane. You can't play shifter in this deck because you want your spells in your graveyard, but you can play DDG. One, because you can thrust into it. You can also thrust into barrier, which is nice. But this also only says that monsters that are sent to the graveyard get banished. So it's really good because you're not worried too much about your monsters. You're worried more about your spells. And so this is going to hurt your opponent a lot more than it hurts you. Another card that you could play going first instead of this is D Fissure. But uh, I really like the D different dimension ground because you can also thrust into this, which is really nice. And then lastly, I played three solemn judgment because again, if you're going first, you really don't want to lose to breakers. If you're like two or three of your quick play spells you don't want to lose them on top of that judgment is just really good when you pair it with something else which is nice so i really like judgment again this could be d fissure if you want it to be but uh i really like judgment i really like ddg and i really like d barrier the fact that these two are thrustable is so important so i really like those and then the hand trap of course is just really good against a lot of things so even this entire side deck these hand traps are good for going second but they're actually also really good for when you're forced to go first as well but i really like the side deck again it's always going to be up to personal preference i think this is a very powerful side deck so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my take on Sky Striker for today's format. I think this deck functions best as an OTK deck personally because there are so many power spells that do really, really good things going second. And for that reason, I think it's just best to play it as an OTK deck. This deck can play very, very well into a ton of different matchups. It kind of has an answer for everything and that's why it's really good in today's format. Now, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We do combo videos, dual replays, product openings, all that good stuff right here on the channel so make sure to subscribe to stay tuned in for more i appreciate every single one of you thank you guys all for watching and with that spanko signing out peace